Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So what we actually are going to be going over in this video is service intervals. Now, basically all the servicing, all the maintenance and everything that you need to do to a EJ motor and uh, kind of the mileage that I go by. Now, there's a lot of different ways that people go about this. There's a lot of different products they use. But for me, I'm going over my intervals and kind of what I believe in and what I think is best. You can do whatever you would like. You don't have to take this to heart, but these are just the mileage and intervals that I do uh, for everything that you need to maintain your STI or EJ motor. Now let's first discuss oil changes. This is a very uh, subjective topic. A lot of people use different oils, different you know brands and everything like that. But for me, I use Motul. This is just kind of the best of the best. This is what everybody should be using, to be completely honest. Um, there's a couple others out there that are, are good, but I think Motul uh, definitely takes the cake. Um, I use uh, 8100 5W40 in mine, um, just you know per my tuner's recommendation in my shop. They say using 5W40 is the best. Um, you know, you can use 5W30. I used that for a long time when I was just on stage one plus, but when I moved up to more power, um, it was recommended to go to 5W40 just because it runs a little bit cooler uh, and it's a little bit better for the motor. As for the oil filter, I use a Mazda oil filter. You know, believe it or not, uh, it sounds a little crazy, but uh, there's been a lot of research done uh, as to why people use this. Uh, I believe there actually is an updated oil filter, the black filter from Subaru. That is as similar uh, quality and size, but I just stick to the Mazda one because uh, I believe this is the best option to go with. I've talked a little bit more detail about this in my oil change video a while ago. So if you are interested in that, you can go back and check it out. But for me, as you can see, this is six quarts of oil. I have the Killer B oil pan, so it requires six quarts as opposed to the five. Uh, so that's why there is two different bottles here. Now, as for mileage, I do every 3,000 miles religiously. Sometimes I even do it sooner. Depending on how long the interval is, I don't drive this car as much as normal people would. Um, so, you know, sometimes if it's a decent amount of time, you know, eight, nine, 10 months, uh, I'll, I'll end up changing the oil before that actually hits the mileage. But definitely recommend doing it at 3,000 miles at least. You know, if you want, you can do it sooner. I believe Subaru recommends every 5,000. I would not do that. I definitely recommend changing it more often than not. But for me, 3,000 miles, I change it no matter what at 3,000 or before. Now we're moving on to spark plugs. Spark plugs are very important. Believe it or not, some people forget to do these. These are extremely important, especially if you are tuned. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. If you are tuned and running more power than stock, uh, I definitely recommend at least going to one step colder um, and doing it more often. For me, obviously you guys know I'm stage three currently, uh, so I do it every 15 to 20,000 miles. Subaru, I believe, recommends every 30,000, uh, but like I said, if you're running more power, if you're putting more fuel into the actual motor, uh, I definitely recommend doing it sooner uh, than later. So every 15 to 20,000 miles, the brand and model number that I use that is highly recommended are NGKs, and the model is LFR7AIX2309. So those are the ones you need. You're going to need four every 15 to 20,000 miles. I did a whole video uh, on replacing them. So if you're interested in seeing how to do that, uh, you can go back and check it out. Now, it is not the most fun thing to do, mainly because of the location of the spark plugs. On a normal motor, spark plugs are located up top. But since this is a boxer, um, you know, they're located on the side. So there's two here and two on the other side. Uh, kind of a pain in the butt to get to. You can, you can see them, um, but just getting your hands down there and using the right tools and everything uh, is not the funnest thing. But the one tool that I recommend you 100% get is swivel joints. So if you do not have a type of swivel joint like this, uh, go and pick one up because this is a lifesaver. Um, just because of the angle that you need to get to them, especially on this side in cylinder four, uh, you're gonna need one of these because basically the frame rail is right where you need to go. Uh, and if you don't have one of these, it is a major pain in the butt. Uh, I actually did the whole entire change without these. I got these afterwards uh, because of it. <laughs> so uh, it can be done without them, but it takes a lot longer. So highly recommend picking up a set of swivel joints so you can get the job done much easier. Next up on the list is transmission and diff fluid. Highly recommend doing that every 30,000 miles. 
For me, I use Motul 75W90, great stuff. Uh, I've been using Motul for years and um, it's amazing how much better everything feels with this stuff in it. For me, I did it right at the 30,000 mark. Um, I was gonna do it sooner, but I never got around to it, but I definitely recommend doing it every 30,000. It's very, very straightforward and very simple to do, especially the rear diff, super easy to get to. Um, you don't even need to jack the car up. It's very accessible uh, just from the rear of the car. I have videos on both of them as well, so if you're interested in seeing how it's done, you can go back and check it out but every 30,000 miles and I recommend doing both the trans and diff at the same time I think from what I remember it is two quarts for the diff and I think four or five or six I forget for the uh, transmission uh, go back in the video you can go check it out but um, you're definitely going to need a decent amount of them um, to get this knocked out it's every 30,000 miles so it's not so bad but yeah 30,000 Motul 75w90 Next up on the list is coolant. So every 30,000 miles, just like the diff and transmission, you're going to want to do a coolant flush. Uh, basically just emptying everything out of the entire coolant system and filling it back up with some nice fresh fluid. I ended up doing it mainly because I upgraded to the coil rad radiator. Um, so, you know, I did a little bit sooner than I needed to. I wasn't having any issues whatsoever, but if you think that you're going to go out and use some other brand, do not. I highly recommend sticking to OEM with the coolant. It's already pre-mixed and everything. Uh, it is the super coolant. Um, it's the blue color, not the green. Uh, so make sure you get the correct one. This is fairly cheap. I think it's only like 30 bucks or so. Um, actually, I think it might even be cheaper. But uh, you get a bunch of it. Get two of them when you're doing a full coolant flush. I have one sitting in my cabinet just in case I ever needed it. Uh, but 30,000 miles, recommend doing a full coolant flush. Uh, and knocking everything out to get it done just to make sure your engine stays nice and cool and healthy for a long time now filter changes i obviously have a little bit different one since i am running the cob redline carbon fiber intake but if i was running a stock intake every single oil change so every 3,000 miles i would check the air filter i would usually uh, throw in a new one after that as well they're relatively cheap to do the stock uh, filter so i would recommend just throwing in a new one you could just bang it out if you really wanted to and it wasn't that bad but i recommend doing the filter change on the stock unit every single oil change it's really not that expensive and it's just one of those things that i just kind of developed into my whole entire oil change uh, habit uh, as well as the cabin filter as well i believe every 10,000 miles or so you should change them um, it gets really really gross you'll be surprised how disgusting those things are i actually have one sitting over here uh for the truck that i have to do um i don't know if that one has ever been replaced so i'm curious to see what that one looks like <laughs> after 60,000 miles uh, but definitely recommend doing all the filter changes and at least checking them every single oil change so every 3,000 miles next up on the list is brake and clutch fluid you want to make sure everything is good make sure the level is good as well I recommend doing a brake flush every 30,000 miles uh, if you want to go ahead and just do a brake bleed and make sure there's no bubbles or air in the system as well uh, you can do that prior that's much easier than a full flush uh, but I use Motul as well uh, I use Motul for all the fluids in the car I don't have any on hand currently but I use Motul I highly recommend upgrading to that since it's a much higher quality hydraulic fluid uh, and you're gonna get a much better uh, accurate feel in the clutch as well as the brakes tire rotation I recommend doing it every single oil change what I normally do is I do passenger front to driver side rear uh, and then passenger rear to driver side front so it does a crisscross so everything uh, wears nice and even there's no strange uh, wear on the tires or anything like that at least every other oil change if you're not doing as much driving like for me uh, I don't do as much as I used to so I don't do it every oil change I do it every other um, so I definitely recommend doing that and that is another nice thing about running an all-wheel drive car is all the tire sizes are exactly the same so you're able to do a full rotation as opposed to you know a staggered fitment when you're not able to do so every oil change to every other oil change I recommend doing a rotation of the tires last maintenance item on the list is belts you're probably not gonna have to change them for a long time uh, I'm at 36,000 miles and mine look totally fine there's no uneven wear or cracks or anything uh, I believe usually it's around 60,000 miles when, is when they start to show some wear. Uh, but it obviously depends on how much you drive, how hard you drive and everything like that, how much power you're running. Uh, so it may be a little bit different. You may need to change a little bit sooner. But I would recommend sticking to OEM belts. Uh, they're not that expensive at all. It's a pretty simple job. It's very, very easy to access. Um, you can't really see it. It's dark, but everything is right there. 
uh, and easy to get to and get the job done. So every 50 to 60,000 miles or so, I would make sure you're checking up on them uh, and making sure they aren't cracked and worn and uh, about to break. So that wraps up my system, my process, my maintenance system uh, on my Subaru STI, on my EJ25. Uh, you know, Subaru recommends different mileage. They usually tend to go a little bit longer than I'm more comfortable with. Uh, so I always end up doing them a little bit sooner, as I mentioned. It allows me to make sure that I am doing everything possible to make sure this engine stays nice and happy and healthy. Uh, and plus, I enjoy doing the maintenance. I think it is fun doing it on your own. You learn about the car. You obviously don't have to pay for labor, and you get to spend some quality time working on the car yourself. And plus, it's just that much more satisfying when you get the job done. And plus, all of this stuff is really not that expensive. The most expensive stuff is the uh, transmission and diff fluid. But everything else is fairly reasonable coolant like I said is like 30 bucks uh, an oil change for the killer bee is about 60 to 70 spark plugs only like 30 40 bucks uh, and then the diff as I mentioned uh, is a little bit more expensive that's around a hundred dollars or so the belts are very very cheap and reasonable filters are cheap as well you're looking at around 50 60 dollars for the filters brake and clutch fluid is cheap as well you're not going to be spending over 50 dollars for that either um, so everything is relatively cheap and that is one of the things that I loved about this car when I was looking to buy a new car I wanted something that was easy to maintain cheap to maintain nothing that needed any crazy service intervals that I had to go to the dealer for I wanted to be able to do everything myself and also not break my wallet not break the bank everything like I said is reasonable easy to do very accessible and it's not that hard uh, I guess the most difficult challenging thing to do is the spark plugs um, just because of the location. It's not hard to do. It's just time consuming. If you are nervous about doing any of these processes yourself, you can take it to the dealer. You can take it to the shop. There is no shame in doing that, but I highly recommend picking up a wrench, picking up some tools uh, and getting a friend over or something and knocking it out yourself. It is that much more satisfying and knowing that it was done correctly is the biggest thing as well. Um, you know, when you take it to a dealer or a shop, you never know if something was done right or someone was having a bad day and they just forgot to do something and then boom, there goes your motor. If something ever broke and you did it yourself, you know it was your own fault uh, and that you can correct that in the future. So that is all I got for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helped anybody that is curious about what to do and what intervals and mileage that I do all my maintenance items for. So if anybody has any further questions, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.